aftercare. One of the things I was reminded of when you guys were speaking is it's not just what you get. It's what you do with it that makes a difference. So the aftercare piece is after they get out of the life. And we used to say we rescue girls from domestic sex trafficking. And I talked to one of our victims. And she said, you didn't rescue me. I was doing just fine. And I thought, perceptions matter. So I said, can I say we took you out? She said, yeah. Or pulled you out? She said, yeah, because that cop wasn't very nice. And you know, he did pull me. And yeah. Okay. So we pull victims out of uh, domestic sex trafficking. When they get to us, the uninformed cops have already, as Holly said, have already um, shackled, what's the other word I want? Handcuffed, may have demeaned. We have had girls come in that say, the cop said he would let me go if I gave him some. That's very uh, too common. Um, and we get them, most of our girls do come from law enforcement or DSS. Uh, they've already been detoxed. We are not set up to do that. There's a lot of steps, a lot, a lot, a lot of steps to getting out. Um, the first one is going along with the decision that somebody made for you that you are getting out. And I say that wording uh, specifically. It's more than a roof on their, over their heads and a bed for them to sleep in. Check out these, I'm not going to read them all, these complex needs. How much of that is met in the life? And what needs do you think are not being met? I'm going to jump to one somewhere on here. There it is, is community. We are pulling them away. Because a lot of times our girls have been in it for more than a couple weeks. They've been in it for a while. They bond with the pimp or the trafficker because they have to. Because if they don't have him, they've got nothing. Or there's been the threats and the coercion that you stay here or else. Um, so they sometimes also one, one type of uh, pimping model uh, are pimps. And a lot of those come from families. So this girl may know the pimp's mom, sister, may know the family. Um, let's see, I'm not seeing belonging, a sense of belonging. Um, they think sometimes, too, up here, freedom. Our girls come into our programs, we have a structure. And they're like, when I was out there, man, I could do what I want when I wanted to. And I said, yeah, as long as, I wouldn't say this to them, you reported to him, he was watching you, one of his um, bottoms, which is the name of one of the girls in charge of the rest of the other girls, was watching you. Another phrase there is bottom bitch. She is responsible for making sure that the girls are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Things like that. So there's a lot of things that may or may not be, again, depending on perception being met here. It takes a team. We have different people from different fields in here. It takes a team. Government policymakers, thank you so much for what you're doing here. Thank you so much. One person can make such a difference. Uh, law enforcement, are they trauma informed or not? Are they treating them like a criminal or a victim? If the girl is running drugs because the pimp says do it or else, is she going to be charged with the felony? Yeah. In North Carolina, where we're from, we can get records expunged. If the felony was committed under the umbrella of being trafficked, under the control of another. Parent educators. Who's talking to the parents about this? 100% of our girls are runaways. Runaways. What are they running away from that is bad enough that within 48 hours, they're likely to be caught up in this stuff. What is the home environment like of your students, of whoever you're working with? 
Is there abuse there? Is there alcoholism? Is there drug abuse there by the parents? Is there mental um, illness in the household? What are they running away from? Mental health counselors, physicians, medical personnel, everybody needs to have a full physical, including STDs, when they come out of the life. And there's a lot of stuff that medically needs to be taken care of, especially dental. It's a mess. Um, safe home staff and volunteers. We can't do this work without a good cadre of highly qualified, trauma-informed volunteers. If you've got any questions, keep writing them down. Pro program needs for direct assistance to victims. Trauma-informed. How many times have I said that word? I'm saying it over and over again on purpose. Trauma-informed versus non-trauma-informed. We'll get to that. Safe. Are your people safe? Do they have attitudes? Are they judging? Is the house safe? We have a security system inside and out. We have cameras rolling all the time. Sometimes the girls will dance in front of one of the cameras and then run into the office and say, play that back. I want to see me. <laughs> it's not a secret, but it's like you know, they want to know that he can't get to them without going through a bunch of stuff. Uh, respect, as I said before, please have try to put on the idea that they are wounded souls first. It's, it's hard for law enforcement because when they get them, they're getting somebody who doesn't want to talk to them, who's been taught not to talk to them, um, who will defend the pimp to the end because that's what he's told her to do or else. Pimps have a whole lot more money to bail girls out. So the girls would just say nothing, say nothing, say nothing, say nothing, over and over again. Authenticity. This is, this is from one of our girls. They will read your body language, and they will read your eyes. Let me see if I can do my stern mom look here. Ask Belinda about it. Now, does that look very welcoming? No. No. Do you think she's going to even begin to try to open up to you? No. They will read your body language and read your eyes before you open your mouth. So if you think you're going to get into a conversation, what can you do to settle yourself? Breathe. Breathe. Thank you. You get the gold star. Um, choices, decision making, non-pimp control. We realized as part of our behavioral management, and this also might work in schools and so on and so forth, we had behavior consequences. We had a dirty bucket list. If you did one of these, you had to pick a chore out of the dirty bucket list, and they weren't the fun ones. That mimicked pimp control. <coughs> you either do this, or you get the consequences. We have a totally different way of doing it now. Danny Silks, loving our kids on purpose. It's our Bible on how to deal with the girls. As soon as, as soon as you do this, this is going to happen. Or there's five phrases you can say. Um, I don't know, I know, probably so, nice try, I forget the fifth one, and I added, I hear you. So when a girl comes up in our program and says, this place sucks, I say, I know. It keeps the emotional volatility out of the relationship, and so they are more apt to open up more then. Um, Stephanie, our director of Fields of Hope, sitting over here, could say to them, um, or someone would say to Stephanie, uh, Amina said that you're going to buy me hair extensions at Walmart tonight. To which one of the phrases would be, nice try. <laughs> Things like that. It puts it back on them, and it just keeps the emotional, uh, this out of the relationship. It's fantastic. Lots of decision making on their part. The other thing, too, is, for example, um, we had one girl, her dishes, the duty was Wednesday night dinner dishes. Well, wasn't she surprised if she, after she didn't do Wednesday night dinner dishes that she had Wednesday night dinner dishes and Thursday morning dinner, uh, breakfast dishes? It's my turn last night. No, sister, you didn't take your turn yet. Your turn is still active. As soon as you do the dishes, they'll stop piling up on your turn and go to the next person's turn. It's with kids, too. Yeah. It's still your turn. It's your choice. You want to finish them now, or you want to finish them later? 
Uh, safe accredited schooling, we do homeschool because we found that our girls don't do well. Also, too, um, chronologically, they're here. Academically, they're here. Emotionally, they're here. So we homeschool. We've got a fantastic homeschool teacher. She can really do it well. Uh, growth opportunities, we, it's mandatory to do counseling. We are uh, faith-based. Um, the question invariably comes up where that was God when I was going through. And we'll say, well, let's, let's talk about that. Let's look at that. Occupational, and then what? You get them out of the life. You school them. You clean them up. You ask them to do a lot of painful work in counseling. They get to know something different about those self-perceptions and world perceptions. It's not enough. How do you launch them out? What are you going to do? That's where the work empowerment, fields of hope, the products that they've made that are out on the, oh, Christmas shopping? Yeah, okay. I'm just putting a little plug in. Do some early Christmas shopping. They're great. So the trauma-informed is the appreciation of the high prevalence. We just talked about the prevalence of this, of traumatic experience. I do know one statistic as a Christian 51% of the males sitting in the pews next to me view porn or involved in some way in the sex trafficking industry. 51%. I looked around in my head thinking, I like these guys. More than 51%. Um, so have an appreciation, understand the prevalence of this, uh, a profound, have an, a thorough understanding of the profound neurological, biological, psychological and social effects of trauma and violence. That could be a whole other um, program. And presume that the clients we serve have a history of traumatic stress and exercise universal precautions by creating systems of care that are trauma informed. This goes right from the policy makers to the aftercare and launching them back into a different life. On the Left side is a list of trauma-informed ideas. On the right side is their correlating non-trauma-informed. So recognizing the high, privilege, uh, high prevalence of trauma versus the lack of education. Recognize cultural and social re-traumatizing triggers versus a Tradition of toughness, that's that pull you up by the bootstraps, it doesn't matter, you just get over it and stuff. Power and control is minimized in the trauma-informed versus um, rule enforcement and compliance. That's that uh, behavior modification where there's behavior and consequences, doesn't work so well with this population. Uh, staff resident collaboration, I've got these off a little bit versus uh, language, labeling language, manipulative, needy, attention-seeking. When you're tired, it's easy to put it on the victim. When you're tired, when you're stressed, when you're at the end of your shift, it's easy to go into that space. Um, when, you're, when you're at the end and it's time to go home and somebody walks up to you, it's like, oh man, you know, I've got dinner in the crock pot, I'm like ready to go. I've got traffic to beat. Take that breath and consider that the next two minutes of her life <coughs> might make the difference as to which tangent she goes off. Addressing uh, training needs of staff, CEUs are a good thing. Uh, to improve knowledge and sensitivity versus patient blaming as a fallback position without training. We had a, up in our area, a prominent law enforcement agent wanted to come and see our house. I did ask him to leave his sidearm outside. He did not. Um, the girls were not there at the time, which is really good, because he put his hand on that Glock and he was standing there you know, with the belly and all that stuff. He was standing there and he said, well, these girls prostituted themselves and I just wanted to kick them. But instead, I looked him in the eye and I said, how can I educate you? Can I train your staff? Because if it's here, what's he saying to the rest of the staff? And it's like the first line. Law enforcement, 
Sometimes it's the first line. Transparent system open to outside parties versus a closed system. We are really, really big on what are you doing about this? What's working for you? How's this going? Show us, teach us, so that we can constantly, constantly improve, improve what we're doing. Ah, when you do this work and you choose to, in your heart, make a difference and be involved, it will change your life. Because as Helen Reddy, who's old enough to know who Helen Reddy is? You're not going to raise your hand. He's smiling, but he won't raise his hand. Um, I am woman, hear me roar, in numbers too big to ignore, and I know too much to go back and pretend. Okay? That's like this little sing-song thing that sticks in here. So when you start and be educated like this, you can't unknow these last few moments. You can't unknow this. You're stuck with it now. What are you going to do with it? While you're doing something with it, take care of yourself. Where is it in your environment that you're going to cultivate your team, your support? What does that look like for you? How are you going to get there? And how are you going to maintain it? Questions. The coach in me is coming out. Team building. We started last December. Every month we have two mandatory meetings. One is a staff meeting, all business stuff about the house. You go over everything that's going on. The other one is a team building meeting. We call it the us time. Talking about work is not allowed. It's all about us as a sisterhood, as daughters of Christ. How do we feed ourselves as human beings so that we can keep doing this? Um, practice clear communication um, and build tolerance for each other and for each other's differences for how you're going to approach this. It's all good as long as it's trauma-informed. The clear communication piece, um, especially as Christians, sometimes we tend to try to be the nice, nice people and not make waves. Sometimes that doesn't work for the benefit of the other girls. The other piece, too, is if you're all talking about somebody that's crossed your path, please do it with respect and make sure you're on the same page. Like not buying hair extensions. Let's clearly communicate that nobody gave permission to spend hundreds of dollars on human hair to put on your own head. Staff training, basic human rights statistics and information did a great job, lots of that. You need to know that it's out there, it's here, it's here. I, I like to say everywhere you see a steeple, there is also evil, and one form of that evil is trafficking, whether it's labor, labor or sex trafficking. They're both here. We live in a fallen world. Appropriate, applicable government regulations. We're changing things. We're trying to get up in the tiered system. Tier one are the countries that are really doing something about it. Uh, tier three, are you talking about the tip report or something else? There's a, there's a, a worldwide recall, report called the tip report, trafficking in persons report. I just came back from Belize, they're on tier two watch list, which means they're going in the wrong direction. They have convicted one case in three years. Three cases in one year, not enough. Uh, being aware of the post-traumatic stress disorder and the function of that, TFCBT cognitive focused trauma, yeah, talking too much. Trauma-focused cognitive behavioral therapy. TFCBT is the tool that we use because it is trauma-informed, and it's, it's that therapy that gets in there and questions their reality, what they've been given as a reality. If he loves you, if he calls that love, let's go over what love, examples of love can be. I love you, honey. Sugar, we're going to marry when you get old enough. I don't know how many terms I've heard that from a girl. Um, and self-care. What do you do for self-care? I've got a Harley Sportster 1200 Custom XL that goes around the mountains of the North Carolina. That's my self-care. More self-care, open communication with supervisors, team building for peer support, available counseling. We um, have counseling available free or at a minimum cost to our staff. 
because when you hear some of this stuff, it really expands your comfort zone. Um, mandatory time off. This is intense work. We require you to take your four weeks vacation. Who has that? Yeah, good. It's mandatory. I will get after you if you've had eight weeks and you haven't taken time off. I will kick you out. <laughs> Clearly stated uh, and implemented boundaries. Um, this is all about clear communication, understanding each other, making, asking those open-ended questions. Supervisor to staff, staff with residents and staff with staff. We have uh, monthly meetings, house meetings. Um, where's everybody at? Let's talk about it. We're getting there. So this is the last piece, what to look for. And this is what matters to you. In addition, looking for a history of running away, looking for a previous, um, what's happening in their home life, parents with issues of anybody that you're working with, previous sexual abuse history, changes in behavior, changes in more provocative clothing, changes in the amount of makeup. Is she wearing more? Where'd she get it? Where'd she get jewelry? Changes in school performance. Is it going down for lack of sleep? I don't know how that girl did it. Changes in personality, an older boyfriend, a secret boyfriend, um, more than one cell phone. Why would that be? She's got her cell phone for her friends and then she's got the one he gave her to call, to use, to call him that I need you. Uh, truancy, are they coming to school? Where have they been? What are they doing? And coerced sex. These are all things that can help you, especially the coerced sex thing, um, see that if you've got a trafficking victim in front of you. Okay. If you've got questions, please feel free to get in touch. Thank you for your time.